start all there. And, all right, here we go. We will be going live now. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. You can't handle the truth! I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice can. the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Welcome to After Hours AM, The Criminal Cold, with your hosts, Joel Sturgis, Eric Olson, and Dr. Clarissa Cole. Of After Hours AM, I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me, Eric Olson. And no Dr. Clarissa Cole, not yet. She will be on hour two, but not for hour one. She got stuck in prison. No, literally, literally she got stuck in prison. <laughs> yeah. Well, she does that, as we know. Well, well, yeah, she's like that. She She's always, uh, our uh, co-host is, uh, for, uh, is a forensic psychologist, uh, Dr. Clarissa Cole. Let's see if I can add her here, if it'll allow that. So uh, I do see she might even be trying to call in. Hello. Hey, Hello. Hey, Joel. Hey, you sound. Uh, we're live on radio, by the way. Oh and, my and goodness! So I, Hello, I, 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 I hear you, but uh, you know that whole thing. I, I hear you, and you sound pretty good. But uh, are you, are you going to be live with us, or do you want to wait for an hour or two? I can be live with you. I am actually almost back to my home, and I can tune in via Skype at that time. Oh, that that sounds good. Let me go ahead, and uh, uh, we will add everybody else into this call and uh, get that a rocking and a rolling. We're live even on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. Hello, I Facebook. know, right? It's a crazy mixed up way of doing things, but I'm getting everyone added in here now. And, uh, you know, good times, good times. Modern, modern technology is not being my friend right now. I hear you. How do I connect with you on Skype later? Can I just... Well, we'll figure rain? that out. We'll figure <laughs> that out when we get there. All right. Sounds good. We'll, we'll get that all figured out. So not a problem. Eric, you with us? Hello. Hello. We are connected back up. Dr. Cole is now with us, and she's the one that caused the fly in the ointment. So if you want to yell at someone, yell at her. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. So sorry. <laughs> Eric, how you doing, man? Hello. Hello. Hey, there you are. I feel all discombobulated now doing this whole thing the way we're doing it live on Facebook. So it's a little strange. But what I, happened? I well, blame Dr. Cole. She's the one that dumped the call, man. She she messed with her call system. No, she didn't do anything horribly. As long it. as we didn't have dead air for two minutes. We so did not. Are... Me and Dr. Cole are just talking about you for two minutes. Where are you now? You got to go back and listen <laughs> yeah. to the archive to get that one now. I mean, that, that one is pretty juicy. Well, hello, Clarissa. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Good. You sound like you're calling on Alexander Graham Bell's own phone. <laughs> I totally wish the historic value of that. No, I'm calling from the road. I was trapped at a prison today. Well, not not every day could stay say that you're trapped in a prison. But anyhow, we're doing things a little bit differently. We're gonna do the guest in hour one, guys, and then hour two we're gonna do all the headlines everyone loves. So I will step aside and let Eric do the introductions. All right, absolutely. Very excited about this. It's really a, a tremendous show, and we're always happy to be working with our buds over at Investigation Discovery. We are talking tonight about the brand new show, a relatively new show, been on, uh, I think, three episodes thus far, 
In Pursuit with John Walsh, tireless crusader for justice and victims' rights advocate, John Walsh joins America's leading true crime network, Investigation Discovery, on their joint mission to track down fugitives on the run and find missing children via new series, In Pursuit with John Walsh. Each week, John leads viewers through unsolved violent crimes where time is of the essence and harnessing the power of ID's active and engaged audience to bring these criminals to justice. Joining John in every episode is his son, Callahan Walsh, who leads the operation on the ground, working in tandem with the community and local authorities to search for persons of interest. In Pursuit of John Walsh made its world premiere on Wednesday, January 16th at 10 Pacific and Eastern. It runs for 12 consecutive weeks on, as we mentioned, Investigation Discovery. Particularly interesting, Investigation Discovery will tap into its uniquely engaged audience, and boy, they are, to help track down these persons of interest in an active call center at, listen to this, 1-833-3-PURSUE, P-U-R-S-U-E, and dedicated online hub at InPursuitTips.com are staffed by trained operators who will accept anonymous tips and alert the proper authorities. To engage with the show, viewers are encouraged to connect. And it's on right now, my friends. Uh, use, or will be, sorry, in an hour. Hashtag Team in Pursuit. Join In Pursuit with John Walsh Facebook page at Facebook.com. In Pursuit with John Walsh and connect on Instagram at Investigation Discovery or Twitter at Discovery ID. There is much more to discuss. Oh, and we will be doing just that with our guest. Her name is Michelle Sagona. And she Hello. is. Hello, Michelle. We're going to talk about you now, dear. Oh, she goodness. is the digital producer for the show. And what a background she has. She's been with John Walsh. She was telling us before the show came on for began anyway 20 years ago and has been working with him for much of the last 20 years michelle is a national correspondent and emmy award-winning television journalist over her career michelle has covered thousands of breaking and historical crime news stories including the tragedies of september 11 2001 the dc sniper murders the aurora movie massacre and the newtown school shooting in connecticut michelle has made her mark on the crime world in a number of capacities she's been inside prisons across the u.s interviewing dangerous criminals and has interviewed thousands of victims families and survivors of crimes Re more recently michelle was a national correspondent for the daytime emmy nominated show crime watch daily and she was the cbs news 48 hour 48 hours crime cider reporter covering law and justice issues each day. Prior to these, oh boy, she has done it all. Michelle was on air and produced for the Fox primetime crime fighting show, America's Most Wanted. Ha ha, John Walsh. For over 13 years, she worked through every position behind the scenes until she became national correspondent. She traveled around the world to track down fugitives and find missing people during the week while running the primetime 1-800 Crime TV hotline every Saturday night. My this Lord. woman never sleeps. She doesn't. Managed, I think they ever chained her radiator. Oh my God! Uh, no, yeah, that's <laughs> pet her on the head. Good Michelle. Good Michelle. She managed the sh a staff of twenty five by making critical decisions like when to move to a lead uh, on a lead to track down a dangerous fugitive and how to work with investigators across the globe to increase arrest. There is so much more to say. But we will discuss it with her directly. Welcome to the program, Thank Michelle you. Sedona. It's so nice to be with you guys. Thank you so much for making time for us. Yeah, our pleasure. How did a nice girl like you get wrapped up in a life of crime? Or, okay, other people's lives of crime. Let's just clarify that. You know, I had an incident at one of my first jobs when I was 14 years old. And I, um, I was a victim of an armed robbery. And that... <laughs> whole entire situation. I really studied the suspect when he was in there, gave a very detailed description. And at the end of the day, both guys were arrested and I had to testify, although I don't remember that portion. Only my mom does. And I knew from that moment on, I was going to do something in law enforcement. I actually thought I was going to be a police officer. But then uh, when I was in college, my cousin lived next to a guy who was just starting out at America's Most Wanted. And he Gave her his business card. She wrapped it up for me for my birthday, and the rest is history. I went in there, and I said, I'm, I'm going to get an internship, and I'm going to walk out of here with a job. And I worked around the clock, and thank goodness that's what happened. 
Hmm. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> so it just kind of you, you fell into it. I did. But you know what's so funny is I was going through some boxes the other day and I came across some pictures of when I was 11 years old on the America's Most Wanted set and on the Fox 5 news set in Washington, D.C. I don't remember being there. I have no idea who took me there. But then nine years later, I ended up working for both shows because they were in the same building. So I would work at one during the day and the other at night and then mm-hmm. skip out and occasionally go to my college classes. You know, and you worked with such an influential show for how many years? I mean, America's Most Wanted was on how many seasons? I want to say 17 or 18, right? Yeah, 25 years total. Wow. 25 years. Yeah. That's some staying went, power. It. I'm telling you, I have seen the show work in the most amazing ways. It is it, it takes your breath away sometimes. How many uh, people were captured because directly because of America's Most Wanted? Uh, more than 1,400, more than 60 successful missing children recoveries. And when, when we say direct result capture, that means... Maybe someone saw it on the show. Maybe someone saw it online. Maybe they called their tip into local law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Maybe they called it into us. But either way, that information led to a capture, which in turn, you know, resulted from the show. And the work that put, you know, that was put into it. You you know, we'd love. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go go ahead, Eric. Sorry, man. I'm just I'm just getting used to this whole Facebook live thing. So don't mind me. I'm just hitting switches. (laughs) Very cool. Well, I, we should mention that uh, both in the article from which, of course, I just read the the bio and, and the description of the show, and it's where you can – one of the many places, of course, you can hear the show live. I wanted to make sure people know, included with that, Clarissa wrote up a really interesting, fascinating, actually, and, and very laudatory write-up of basically the legacy of – of John Walsh. And I think it's really, it would be super interesting, Clarissa, now for you to to talk a little bit with Michelle directly and maybe put some of your uh, insights out there and, and uh, get some feedback on that. Because uh, obviously Michelle was there, uh, you know, ground floor and uh, your assessment is, is very detailed and intricate and positive. Uh, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Uh, we yes. Can, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, w- I wanted to know if if John ever discussed, you know, uh, getting things uh, into the NCIC. That's the mm-hmm. FBI database for missing mm-hmm. things and people. Oh my goodness, the the things John has done over the years, I it's it's too hard to even list them all, to be honest. From founding the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, where I'm at right now, because they're hosting our hotline here for mm-hmm. investigation discovery, to working with law enforcement across the country and programs and helping people and doing whatever he can. So I'm sure at some point there's been some sort of conversation, um, but I don't know all the details of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that I think that that piece cannot be underestimated. Though, that the I mean, before that, there wasn't any place really nationally for parents to go to talk about. Not really. There wasn't anywhere nationally, was there, guys, for parents to go? Did we lose Clarissa? Uh, we might have lost her, but she was asking if there was part. anywhere. Here. Yeah, there we go. Here, here we go. Yeah, your cell phone dropped just for a second there, Dr. Cole. But uh, basically, I'll relay what you're asking. Clarissa's curious, where did parents go? Was there anywhere for parents to go to report this? To report Pr- prior. Uh, prior to this. Prior to this. Let me Prior to that. America's Most Wanted or, pri- you know, a- a- the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, yes. or the NCIC specifically. I do believe she was referring to the NCIC. Dr. Sorry, Cole, are you there? Here. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, I do believe she was referring to the NCIC. Got it. Uh, it no, I was like... actually I was actually referring to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Ah, the gotcha. There was... ah, okay. no, yeah. No, no place for parents, no national place for parents to go for any sort of support. I mean, you know, they could go to their local offices, but where could they go for advice on how to handle this? I mean, John was kind of the catalyst for that, wasn't absolutely. he? Absolutely. He and Reve, his wife, and now Callahan, 
Um, they have done so much work to help so many families with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And I think it's really important for folks to know that it's a nonprofit. Um, it relies on donations, just like many other nonprofits do. Um, families can reach out to them not for help, but they can also reach out um, if you have a tip. For instance, the cyber tip line houses operators that will take in leads on cases where children are being abused. I mean, there's so many different entities. Um, there's a whole division for children that mm -hmm. parents can teach their children online safety through NetSmarts. Uh, mm -hmm. There's so many different divisions that have really blossomed over the years just from the inception of the National Center. And, you know, they have the staff here is tremendous. There's so many people who work here. And I will tell you that they are able to do age enhanced photos on so many of these cases. They handle all the missing children posters. I, I mean, it is it really it, it's mind blowing the work that they do, especially not just with families, but also with law enforcement to help with these recoveries. And they're really utilizing social media to help with these recoveries. That is awesome. I mean, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Clarissa, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Follow through, pursue, discuss more, or I will jump in with both feet as is my want. <laughs> I feel like we're talking no, with was... two cans and a string. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I will be <laughs> home shortly. No, I, I wanted to say that, like, the FBI used to keep a uh, record in the National Center, the, the information database that they had, the NCIC. Mm -hmm. And yes. before John Walsh, they only kept records of, get this, of missing things. You know, like robberies, uh, thefts, thing like, things like that. And it was John, John Walsh that brought up that they should be keeping records of missing people. And you know what? And guys, could I call you back in just a couple of moments? We actually have breaking news here, and I've got to run next door to the hotline. Sure, go to your hotline. Can yeah. I call you right back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. News is I'm breaking. So Drama in real life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get over there. Get right after. Now. What are you still <laughs> doing <laughs> here? Get I'm up. running next door, guys. I'll call you right back. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, Bye -bye. drama in real life right there, Eric. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it just shows you how real all this is. Clarissa, this would be a, a great time. I, I, I really did want to make sure people know about your article. And, of course, I quoted some of it in our article on the America's-Most-Haunted site. And, again, of course, people can hear the show live there or in recorded form. But, uh, you know, the whole article where you're talking about the legacy of John Walsh is on your site, of course, the wondrous criminal code. And uh, I thought you had some really interesting insights. You, I mean, your basic thrust was we actually pursue, you know, criminal justice differently in this nation because of him and his team and his efforts. Would you like to go into that a little further more beyond what we've already discussed with Michelle? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, John Walsh, to think that one person, well, and with his wife, I don't want to discount what Rubé has done, but like with John and his wife, what they have done, they have overhauled the American justice system. Like, like I said, the, the FBI database didn't keep records on people. And since he pushed so hard for that, and they changed the entire database of the FBI to include missing people, thousands of people have been recovered, not, you know, some of them alive and well, some of them not, but at least the families can get closure. Um, mm -hmm. He totally reformed how parents interact with their children. And he brought to the fore the idea that predators, specifically sexual predators, are out there and that they prey on children. And, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I wasn't around, or, well, I was around, but I don't remember. Do you remember that, uh, Eric, being part of sort of the American experience before what happened with Adam Walsh? Oh, no, no, not not anything like the level of awareness. Uh, I mean, that case was so huge and it was so, so gut wrenching and so awful in the details of it. And then and then you saw it after the fact that that, you know, here's here's the father. He's come forward. Oh, he's not just he doesn't. Well, maybe there's something more going on there than just, a you know, a, a grieving uh, father. What's he going to do? And then just to see. How he literally threw himself. I don't even remember what his background was. I, I'm, I'm sure you could tell us. 
uh, you know, prior to to throwing himself into this pursuit of uh, justice for, uh, well, first of all, finding people, because that's mm-hmm. so critical. And the timing, you know, we've learned that and you've told us so many times, Clarissa, that the timing of these things is so critical and it's so important that we find people, uh, you know, track them down as quickly as possible and 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 act in real time. So the fact that he was able to to sort of assemble this national audience every week for all those years. Yes, it absolutely changed the way we think about it, the way we hear about it, the perception of it. I I was I suppose vaguely aware that people did, you know, despicable, perverted things and even ended up killing children, but it really was very hush-hush and it's I I I don't think my perception was different from most of the rest of the nation, that that was something very rare. It was something that didn't happen very often. Uh, you know, remember when I was a kid, and of course you guys have both talked about it too, you're uh, uh, almost 20 years younger than I am, or certainly 15 years younger than I am. And But you guys too, even in your childhoods, you were, you were, you were able to run around, you felt pretty safe, your parents thought you were pretty safe. And, you know, part of the legacy here, I, I, in some ways, I guess it's a downside, but it's also realism. Uh, you know, the fact that parents became so much more protective of their children, so much more aware of yeah. what their children were doing, and keeping track of them rather than just sending them out, you know, all summer long, say, when they weren't in school, just sending them out. I don't want to see you till till uh, till the sun goes down. I want you to run around and play and have fun. And uh, and be busy and stay the hell away from me is that what was basically, <laughs> you know, uh, w- 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 one of the oh, central yes, I could tell you precepts yeah. of of parenthood. So, but anyway, uh, ha- to answer your question, yes, absolutely. Uh, w- when he came along and and the tragedy of it and his just dogged pursuit of this a- as a concept, you know, and and, and to make the best. Out of tragedy, even that mm-hmm. was something kind of new at the time. The simp- the notion of instead of just being a victim of turning what could be victimhood into a positive, proactive approach, even that was a relatively new, or if not new, a relatively much lesser known path that people can take. He really showed people how to take the the worst possible experience and turn it into something that has literally benefited the entire nation and really the world. Hundreds of millions of people have lived better lives because of his efforts. And it that's an amazing thing. Well I think Yeah, that, I, I mean yeah. I, I oh go ahead. I was Joel, gonna yeah, say go really ahead. there was two shows that impacted the criminal landscape like none other and that was of course john walsh and unsolved mysteries those are the two that really came on the scene and and made an impact and john walsh's show though he came from a place of tragedy where a lot of people are already asking me on uh facebook instant messenger well what happened to john walsh's son john walsh's son was unfortunately murdered by a serial killer or a serial you, ch- child yeah, killer. Yeah, you can, you can get the entire, uh, there's a link, there is a link on the criminal code to the entire story if you uh-huh. want it. It's, it's yeah. in the John Walsh article. There's a link right at the top. Yep, exactly. And if you guys... Why have, don't you give us the basics of it, though, Clarissa, for those who can't get to a computer right now? Why don't you just give us the basics of, of Adam's case? Uh, Adam Walsh was six years old, and they lived in a small community called Hollywood, Florida. And they went to the mall one day, and John and his wife were shopping, and six-year-old Adam was playing a video game. You know, those little stations that they had for kids to try things out. And so they left him there to kind of play the game while they were talking to a salesperson. But while they left Adam there, the other kids, the older kids, got very rowdy. And so one of these mall security people ushered the kids outside the mall. 
and Adam was young and shy and didn't speak up for himself and say, no, no, I'm, you know, I, my parents are right over there. He didn't do that. He let the security mm-hmm. guard usher him out. And Otis Tool, a known serial killer and offender against children, happened to be looking around for a child to abduct. He'd been to the mall the two days prior looking for someone, didn't find anyone. And he said that when he saw Adam, that it was a sign because he was so young and so alone. And he went and he picked him up and, and took him into his car and murdered him not long after that. God, what a tragedy, though. And, and it's unfortunate that's what sparked the change was that horrible act by that guy. Uh, and, 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 and there is. Oh. There's been a lot of backlash with that, too. I, I addressed that in the article, too, that people upset about the idea of predator panic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and stranger it, danger. It, it, is there predator panic? Is it overblown or is it just better? Uh, it's just better recorded now. I think that they're blaming the wrong person. So people went, especially criminology people, went pretty hard after John Walsh. Um, in the beginning, saying, look, you're making everybody afraid of strangers abducting their children, which, as we know statistically, doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. It's usually someone the family knows that abuses their children. So this whole idea of stranger danger and predator panic, they blamed John Walsh for creating this false panic. But I argue against that absolutely, unequivocally. The reason that we choose to be afraid of strangers is because we can't face the truth, which is that it usually is somebody we know. So people were panicked over strangers because they didn't want to be panicked about what they really should have been panicked about. It certainly wasn't John Walsh's fault. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, our fault as fallible people that don't want to believe that it's someone close to us. Yeah, that could be your buddy down there. Yeah, it could be a friend, a relative, or what have you. Yeah, a relative. Yeah. uh, You know? And then you you don't want to think about it. And and if it's a stranger, you can kind of blame the parents. And I know some people probably did in the beginning blame Mm -hmm. John and and his wife for maybe not keeping a close enough eye on their kid. But show me a parent that's 100% perfect 100% of the time. They don't exist. That's me. You know, so, hey, you just uh, described me. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What? Yeah. Wow. Who knew I it? Had, I had no idea. I oh know. Gosh. Not until you just brought it up did I know. But on a serious note, you guys can uh, <laughs> that are watching us on Facebook Live, there's a chat room that comes with Facebook Live. And you feel free to put your questions right in the chat room. I'll read them, and I will uh, ask them as well. So, Or you can give us a call at 218 218- Oh, 218. Almost gave my own cell phone number. Wouldn't that have been funny, right? <laughs> 612-326-6874. We can also you can also call us that way too on the call in line. But that being said, America's Most Wanted it was a great show. I watched a lot of it. But it was always amazing how they captured the people. It, it was really a great tool across the board and now he's coming back i was kind of surprised to see john to come back to tv i really was what do you you think about that eric the idea of him coming back um well I, i i'm not exactly sure what the underlying motive is i think it's a matter probably of I'm guessing investigation discovery really wanted to have him Ka-ching. and you know, I mean, goodness, uh, he, the biggest name ever, the most successful person and something you were saying, uh, Clarissa just now uh, rung a bell, the network and the methods that he used, you know, with, in doing the show live or at least having people there live to respond to live responses to the show to audience response to the show so giving a, the the tips and all that I, in a sense that was a actual precursor to social media they created a social media um citizen journalist organization years and years and years before such a thing existed online so that was very prescient as well um, I, I, I'm wondering w- what your thoughts are about the legacy of that part of it as well. The fact that not only was this just usually TV, especially back then, especially 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 
TV was passive, right? You received it, you watched it. There was no real way to interact with it. It, it was sent to you. It was pushed out to you, to use uh, uh, online terminology or digital terminology. It was, it was a push type thing. When John came along and set up the program the way he did, and especially these his organizations, and then the fact that you know he had people literally taking calls live while the show was on each week, it it really changed the way we not only do criminal justice and think about criminal justice and, and that system in the U.S., but it also changed the way we interact with media and, in particular, TV. Any thoughts on that? Uh, he was not only was he I don't know that he was prescient as much as that as a father whose son was a victim. He had been burned. What John realized, because he's a very intelligent man, you know, and what mm-hmm. he realized is, is that when someone sees something, you know, that they can't explain or they or, you know, they have a chance to talk to somebody right now is the moment to do it because that's when it's fresh in their mind, you know, because witnesses and people that might have seen something, they're not going to come forward two hours later, three hours later, or the next day when their own police station might be open to taking those calls back in the day. They needed a a place that was open right then. So when somebody was sitting and watching their TV right that minute, that was the best time for them to call because that's when it's the freshest in their minds. And, And he was burned by, Cops not taking statements from people right after his son went missing when they should have. And people forgot things that they didn't remember until later. So I think that he worked that into a system that became iconic to his show. Yeah, I agree. Amazing stuff. Hey, I I just got an email. um, Speaking of (laughs) real-time communication, apparently this breaking news uh, is just incredible and is super hot and is super big. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a method of figuring that out and seeing what that is on our own, but I am literally hearing from the show itself via email saying that she has been called away and she has got to deal with this, and she may or may not even be back uh, in this next half hour. Sure. So, so I know we're at the bottom of the hour. Did you want to go to a break? Yeah, we're going to go to a break, and then when we come back, we might as well um, hit up uh, True Crime Headlines and go from there until we hear more news. And then if there's something that breaks in the meantime, we'll bring her back on if she's able to do so. So we'll All right, be right back. Good. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? My backyard. Oh, your backyard. Try telling a bear that. I did, and this bear talked back. Talking bear, that's rich. No, wait, it was Smokey Bear. Smokey? Why didn't you say so? I did say so. Continue. I was burning yard waste. No, boy. He told me to burn legally and responsibly, and to remember that if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. And as always, he's right. You know, 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. That means 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Yeah, I know that now. Thanks to me. Actually, thanks to Smokey. As usual, the talking bear gets all the credit. Get your Smokey on. Always burn responsibly and contact your local fire department for open burning regulations. Because 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Northern Tool and Equipment. I got a uh, rather serious problem over here. All right, what are we looking at? Cranky mother-in-law asleep on the couch in the man cave. Dear God. It gets worse. That's impossible. She's passed out on the remote. I stand corrected. What do I do? Okay, I want you to grab a torn big red hydraulic bottle jack. Uh, okay. Now you wedge that bad boy in under your mother-in-law and crank her up skyward. It's working. And the remote. Great. Now grab that torn big red two-ton folding shop crane and put that woman on wheels. And away we go. There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Welcome 
Welcome back to After Hours AM, The Criminal Code. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric L. Olson, that was me, Olson, and I was going to say and before I said Olson, apparently we will any moment be able to shift Clarissa into oh, actually audible mode. That'd audible mode. Yes. I, I, can, I can be on Skype now if you want oh to Oh my good lord, yes, we're, we're doing it right now as we speak. Let's uh, get this connected up. I can no longer handle the tin can call. It's driving me insane. <laughs> insane i tell you hello hey there we are much better oh look at that look at that uh -huh. here, we, here we go now it is time for everyone's well, almost at people's favorite part of the show and that is the dumb crimes not so smart criminals section of the show better known as headlines True Crime Headlines brought to you by the criminalcode.com criminalcode.com is your one-stop shop for all things uh, well, I was going to say Amazemo, but really what it is, it is Amazemo, but it's all things true crime. There, not only can you read all about serial killers, mass murders, all the debauchery that happens in true crime, but you would have the opportunity to also read the doctor's notes. And that person, that doctor, is our very own Dr. Clarissa Cole. She's a proprietor of that website. So you get to read those notes and get an insight to what makes these monsters, serial killers, and otherwise just bad people tick. So definitely check that out at thecriminalcode.com. Thank you very much, Joel. Well, I've got some interesting headlines this week because this week was we had no shortage of weird ones. Um, this one is a college student. It starts off with a college student who thought she had a ghost in her home. Now, I know that sounds weird, okay, but like... You guys talk about paranormal stuff all the we time. We do. So, Every Thursday night, you can listen to Paranormal right? Thursday. Yeah. So, like, do you, do you is that outside the realm of possibility for what you guys think could – do you think that's weird for what? her to think that? That she has a ghost that she in her had house? A ghost. No. Yeah. I don't think that's weird at all. Because, okay, no, here's – that is here's, not weird. No, Here's not the evidence. Bit. The evidence was that items of her clothing were going missing – um, just small things or items of her clothing that she knew she put away somewhere that she couldn't find and handprints in her bathroom walls. Well, that's not good. It's time to call the Ghostbusters. That's a bad sign. Mm, that's always bad. Right. But like, would you necessarily think it was something other than paranormal? Well, I would. <sighs> How often this happened? Quite a bit, like on a regular basis or once or twice? It well, enough that she noticed, but not so often that it was just a constant thing. It was just enough that she noticed. Like, wait a minute, where did I put that? Why is there a handprint? I'm guessing that the okay. handprint might show up like when it yeah. got steamy in there, you'd notice handprints. Well, it's either that she has a ghost or maybe a kid somehow got a key and made a copy and it comes in every now and again. Am I warm at all? Uh, well, it's one day, right? She's home yeah. and on Saturday and she business. starts to... Yeah, and she starts to hear a rattling in her closet, okay. like a rattling sound. Yeah, and she's like, and it got so loud that it went beyond paranormal, where she's like, oh, my God, it sounded like there was a raccoon in my closet. <laughs> a coon? There's a coon in my closet. And it freaked her out. Because Give me the 30-30. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, and, she, and she went to her closet, and she said, who's there? And someone answered. What? The, oh, now man. it's getting really weird. By wait, the way, wait, wait. just backing up a moment. Before we go on, I do want to say, because I'm not sure we got this out there. Anytime you have a suspicion of paranormal activity, you really do. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the world. You owe it to intellectual um, honesty to rule out natural <laughs> causes. So I did want to add that. Go ahead now. Sorry. No, that was. I'm really glad you said Debunking, that. Debunking uh, is yeah. The she trading. didn't. Oh no, as one of my things pops up. No, she didn't do that first. Really, you know, she just said, "Oh, it's weird," but didn't really look into it much after that. And so she goes to her closet, which is rattling, and says, "Who's there?" And someone answers, and he says, "Oh, my name is Drew." <laughs> <laughs> so someone answers from behind in her closet yes. when she said, "Hey, who's in there?" It's just Drew. Yes. Don't mind me. I live in your wall. Don't worry. And, yeah. And so she then looked on the other side of her closet door and realized that there was a man in there wearing my clothes, my socks, my shoes, 
and has a book bag full of more of my clothes. <laughs> oh, this just keeps getting weirder. <laughs> so what'd she do? Did she say, Drew, you need to leave? Did she call the police? She offered well, him a Coke, she, or what'd she do? I mean, she's Well, she was, you know, because he was, I think, so polite. She said, are you going to do anything to me? And he said, oh, no, no, no. So she kind of engaged him in conversation while, uh, and he did say, you're really pretty. Can I give you a hug? And she, she okay, said, no. That's weird um, right there. Yeah. Beyond everything else, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every... So far, we're checking off every weird every box, box has been is. ticked here. A, he's in your house here without your consent. B, he's living in your wall. Now he's hitting on you <laughs> while he's standing in your closet holding in your, your possessions. Hey, baby. Yeah. yeah. By the way, hey, I'm baby. I, I like the cut of your clothes. <laughs> yeah, I really like the. I like the way you're looking. So she, while she's talking to him, sort of keep him calm. She texts her boyfriend, right? And can you even imagine? what those texts might have been like, I... Hey honey, there's a guy in my closet wearing my heels. Could you call the cops for me? Um, so the, the cops eventually showed up, took him away. Right. Um, and his name was drew drew okay. Swafford and they, they took him into custody. Um, but it turns out as if the story couldn't get weirder, it does. So it turns out that, one other time, so these two girls live in this apartment that they rent, that one time they woke up to two different men standing in their living room talking. What? No. They, Wait a minute. This yeah, has happened live before. At a train station. <laughs> I was going to say, what? yeah. So this is not the first time she's had odd people living unbeknownst to her in her home. Right. Where she, yeah, they woke up and there were two. So basically they had complained to the, 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 their rent collector people that own the, the <laughs> rent collector before. people you mean landlords yeah yes <laughs> landlords sorry they complained to the landlords before and the landlords changed the locks after the incident with the two men just to make sure and then this happened so i'm like i don't know how people are getting into this place but it's happening on all a regular basis all right what would you do if you were in your house and this happened to you clarissa i to be perfectly honest You'd shoot uh, them. i no, actually, no. I would have done exactly the same thing that she did. I would have done it no different at all. I would have, because since he was calm, yeah, I would have been calm. And if he was talkative, I would have been talkative. I would not have wanted to tip him off that anything dismayed me. <laughs> That's because, funny, though. Well, obviously, he could be really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but then this Drew takes the moment to hit on her. That's I know, funny. Right? I mean, you know, totally disregards he's been living in her closet. But says, hey, by the way, as long as I'm already in trouble, eh, Miles, let's see if I can get somewhere with this. I, I don't know that I blame him. I mean, he already Why likes not? Profession. Yeah, you're already yeah. going in. So, Do you know. we know how people have been <laughs> passing through like the walls are impermeable? Or permeable, <laughs> I should say, not impermeable. Like, like, no, like amoebas through cell walls or something. Do we know? I have no, no, no idea. So cops are looking into it, but that's it. That is really, really weird. Really weird. I, yep. uh, uh, yeah. If I were her, I'd move to a high rise building next time <laughs> and be at the top floor. You know, I, I, yeah, I would not. I'd change my name, move, move yeah, to a cave. I don't know. I'd do whatever terrifying. it takes to get away from that. You know, man, that's nuts. Okay, where where are we going to go next? Hi, guys. It's Michelle Sagona. I'm back again. Hey, Woo! Michelle, how you doing? Hi. Welcome Hi. back Hi. to the Hi. show. Hi. What's Hi. the breaking news? Oh, we weren't expecting you. We have a bunch of things happening, and sometimes that happens at the hotline. Leaves will come in before the show, or investigators are working on something or moving on something. So there's, you know, there's a lot of activity going on just I apologize for that. Sometimes I break away and then try to jump back in. And then the, our show is getting ready to begin at 10 o'clock. Oh, wow. So uh, all the operators are getting ready. And, uh, you know, you know what we thought? We What's thought that? you staged the whole thing. Yeah, just for yeah. We were kind of thinking that, too. We're like, maybe she staged No, that. I didn't. No, it definitely was not staged for sure. I was like, Eric, you chased another one off. Great. Yeah, no, I'm back. I am back. I apologize again. I'm so sorry about that. Good. No problem. Good. Hey, you, problem. You know what I would love to hear in whatever your limited time, which because I know you do have to go by by 10, right? 
is um, we, we'd love to hear your take on the new show. What is happening with the show? What exactly do you do on the show? You know, t- get people all revved up to watch it in 16 minutes. Uh, and then we know you do have to take off. But we really do appreciate your coming back. And, of course, yes, if you can tell us anything about anything that just <laughs> happened, that'd be wonderful. But if you can't, then we just we'd love to hear your take on the show, what you're doing on it. Get people pumped. Well, here's what I can tell you. The mission is exactly the same. The The goal is to find these fugitives, to recover these missing children, to bring them home. And how the show has changed over the years, what I will tell you, is that we have social media at our fingertips. So back in the Fox days, you know, social media was there sort of towards the end, but people weren't really utilizing it like they do right now. Mm-hmm. And so we had this whole other avenue um, to receive tips back when the internet first started and amw.com launched. Um, I, I was a part of the team that had one of the first uh, online captures for the old amw.com website. And we thought that was great. And it is great. Um, but now we've just come leaps and bounds with social media, with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and all these different resources. So that's how the show has evolved and changed. What, you know, some of the cases, uh, it's it's just when you think you haven't heard the worst, you hear the worst mm-hmm. again. I mean, it is, some of them are heartbreaking. I mean, from children watching their parents getting murdered. Oh, man. To, yeah, I mean, it's horrible. It's, those are the absolute worst when something happens to these children or these children have to witness something or lose their parents. And sometimes Mm -hmm. in these situations, they're not just losing one parent, but they're losing the other one too. Mm -hmm. If you know, their mom or dad is involved. So those are the heartbreakers um, and the ones that really pull at your heartstrings and make you want to do something. And some of the other harder cases are the ones that have been around for a long time. I mean, you know, Thames Smica, for instance, that's a case we had aired. I think it was the, the second, show a couple weeks ago and um, the victim in that case he was dating Robert Redford's daughter when he was murdered I mean in this case has been open for decades so some of the cases are are newer some of them are a little bit older but everybody needs justice Mm -hmm. yeah yeah because justice delayed is justice justice denied and we don't want it delayed any longer than it has to be we do not absolutely not Um, so we I I really I take a lot of pride in this. If you're reaching out to us over social media, the In Pursuit with John Walsh Facebook page um, or the Discovery ID Twitter account and you're hashtagging team in pursuit, I'm doing everything I can to get back to you. I'm letting everyone know that it, it might take a especially tonight I, when I'm really we're really, really busy and I'm answering everyone. It yeah. takes me sometimes a little while. But I'm still up with you guys on the on the West Coast airing. And, you know, I think it's so important to make sure that people know that we hear them. And Mm -hmm. although maybe we can't get their case on the air right away, what I have been able to do is work with our digital team to -hmm. get some videos put up on the Discovery ID Facebook page, which has three point one million followers. So, you know, we're able to do different things, um, even if we can't get the case on the air. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes there are other options. Yeah, there's a Could lot you- of a lot of different options. And uh, I didn't mean to step all over you, Eric, but I was going to ask you really quick, has smartphones and camera phones changed the game at all? Made oh it easier goodness. to capture them and see them and put them in locations? Absolutely. Um, And people are taking pictures of other people. They are Mm -hmm. taking pictures of clues. They are sending those in. They are, you know, they're doing all of these things. And it's to be able to have that information at their fingertips, investigators fingertips, we're able to rule in these tips a lot more quickly. We're able to rule them in or out, um, you know, as things are happening and, and be able to say that's one we need to move a little bit, you know, faster on or investigators here. We'll put a task force in place in another city. And that, that just happened on a lead not too long ago. And it didn't pan out, but that's okay because they're taking that information and moving it down the field. And that's what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quick movement and quick identification, all the better. Yes, yes. I mean, and really listening to these people. Sometimes people call in, they don't want to be identified. They don't have to be, they can remain anonymous. And but, and they're scared. Sometimes they don't call on show nights. I remember many times where they've waited, you know, till the middle of the week, they've mm-hmm. thought about it. 
maybe there was an emotional connection to the story that weighed on them and they finally made the decision to make the right move. Sure. I mean, some we've had people call in. I'll never forget this case. We showed like a little recreation of a guy. I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but he had an obsessive compulsive disorder. And every night he would come home and reorganize his sock drawer and reorganize his jewelry over and over and over again. And we re- just recreated that moment. And the, the person inside the house was like, calls in is like, that's my roommate. Oh, man. And so, oh, he's tapping his foot three really, times and times he's right, rearranged right. his socks 12 times. That's one of the ones where you're like, okay, we need to get out there immediately. Um, and sometimes it happens quickly and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, I've had other captures where the tip has come in. We've worked it all night. And, you know, the, the capture happens at 7 a.m. the next morning or the capture happens two years later. You know, I've tracked some of these guys. <laughs> I can a tip would come in and I'd get to their location in Kentucky or Louisiana or wherever and they're gone. And it's it's like I have pictures of this one guy being baptized at a church with his girlfriend. I, I mean, it's it's crazy. The stories I could go on yeah, for days. That is crazy. Eric, before I interrupted you, you had a question, man. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm just. You guys are getting at, at all the, the the important things. I was gonna see if if um, with Michelle back, if she had any thoughts on the evolution of of the legacy of John Walsh through all the years. You've already talked about the difference being, you know, the access to social media and the way people are using it. Uh, we were saying you guys were really pioneers, you know, pre-social media in that you created, in essence, your own social network when that show was on and you guys are taking those live calls and getting those tips and everything. Um, we, we, we did have another question uh, actually that came up off air. Uh, why do you think John decided to come back after such a successful career, 25 years and what brought him back for another, yet another round, Uh, yet another round. You know, I think it is inside of him to help others. It is when John is in a room, or if you've ever heard him speak, or if you've ever had the chance to be around him, everything stops. All focus is on him. He has this presence. He has this passion. He has this drive. And it is all to help other people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, and I don't want to speak for him, but when ID came to him with this idea, and also to bring his son Callahan on as well, I think it was just another opportunity to help families and he couldn't let it go. I mean, this is a guy who has done such tremendous work. He is, you know, with his horses and his grandkids and his family and doing such wonderful things, but he will carve out this time to help other people. It's just what he does. It really honestly is. Man, what an incredible guy. What an incredible legacy he's left behind or will be leaving behind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's it's got to become somewhat addictive in its own way, though. I mean, once you start to make such a difference in people's lives, I think it, it would be kind of difficult to to walk away completely and and not be able to to do that anymore. I, I think that would be difficult. Absolutely, and I, I tell you, it's when you get a capture, or when you're capturing someone, not just in the United States, but I mean, dozens of other countries. John has caught people. And I say, John, of course, there's investigators and there's staff and you know what I mean? But this is really, he is spearheaded. This This is his show. It's his mission. And when, when that happens and you get to call the family or you get to be there with them to tell them that justice will be served, you are exactly right. There is, there is something that attracts you to that and makes you want to do it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And and being able to bring some sort of closure. I mean, I work on the other side of it where I'm working with the the perpetrators day in and day out. But um, it's kind of that same idea when they finally maybe confess to all parts of it and they finally have owned that. And you know that people are going to get some closure for that. You don't want to stop doing that if you're good at doing that. And John Walsh is certainly an expert as an bringing expert. closure to, yes. to victims and you know like yes. i'm an expert at making criminals cry apparently but it's <laughs> it, it it helps bring people it does bring people together and i mean i've seen some that's what i was going to ask have you ever ever had sort of a situation where somebody was captured after a lot of years and they had to sort of face off with the victim's family um maybe was there any forgiveness or what does that look like i have seen 
I have seen it all over the last 20 years, to be honest. I have seen um, this rip families apart. I have seen them, or I have seen it bring them closer together. I have seen them forgive. I have seen them hate. I have seen, uh, there is every type of emotion. I feel like, unfortunately, um, and fortunately, because when justice is being brought forward, it, it is, there is peace that comes with that. But mm-hmm. I have seen so much over the, so, you know, so many different emotions over the years with so many different families. Um, and it's, and some of them are forgiving. Yes, they, they are. And some of them just can't forgive. And some yeah. of them can't let it go. Um, and some of the cases, even if you have one person or one man, man or woman or suspect, maybe there's still another portion mm-hmm. to it that, that's wide open that still needs to be solved. So every case is unique and every case is different. So true. And that's the bad part, though, is it's never going to end. You, you, you know, know, all we can do is get better at catching them. Yes, you, you, you're right. You know, and bringing justice because it, there's no sign of ending. That's the bad part. No, I, I had a, you know, I, I have a thought. Just, just that we're running out of time. Uh, if yeah. Michelle, if if you do have to go in in five minutes, and we certainly understand, uh, I am dealing. We'll, we can talk about that more the next hour. Um, you know, my my mother's in the ICU and is not expected oh. to pull through. So we've been really thinking. We've been at the hospital, obviously, a lot. And we've been thinking, I always end up an, overanalyzing everything. And we're just thinking, I, uh, I've been gone through a lot of medical stuff with her and my dad before that. So I've spent a lot of time around medical people. And we're just, I'm just observing the way they have to compartmentalize themselves because, and find that kind of sweet spot between too much empathy and, of course, not enough empathy. Um, and of, of course they're human and we want them to care, but they can't get too invested because of what they do. You know, that's their job is dealing with people who are, who are failing. I'm wondering, does that enter into yours or John's, uh, equation? I've talked to Clarissa about this too. Uh, how do you handle that? Does it ever get you down? Is it ever too much? Do you have to compartmentalize? Do you ever get jaded? You know, um, I will say this, that I think it's, that's an incredibly, first of all, I'm so sorry to hear about your mom. That is you. it's terrible. And my thoughts are with you. Um, you. I will say you do have to put it in a different pocket and it has gotten more difficult for me after I had my child three and a half years ago. Um, I've always been sympathetic and empathetic to victims and survivors and their families and working with them and wanting to help them. But it is, it has even made me it has made me even more sympathetic and more connected after, you know, after having my daughter, to be honest, um, and just seeing life and creating life and having it, you know, having someone like that ripped away. I don't know how these families cope. I mean, they have each other and a lot of them lean on prayer, but it is, I mean, it is really tough. And I'm also a firefighter, a volunteer firefighter, and I have been for more than 20 years. So sometimes I, you know, in the field, When I'm coming across these people, I always, no matter what's going on, if there's someone standing to the side or something's happening, I try to connect with them and let them know that we're there and we care about. Um, So there's, you know, there's a lot of different, I think, and and I do bring it home. I do, for sure. And and sometimes you have to, you know, I talk about it and, you know, you you have to, you have to. It's just the way to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us one more time the show and where they can watch it and what time. Yes. Thank you guys for everything. Tonight on Investigation Discovery, ID 10 p.m. in person. You'll not only see John, but you'll see his awesome Again, uh, John Callahan. Yeah. We have two great cases there tonight. Exactly. In pursuit with John Walsh tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern. So check that out. ID Discovery. Also check your local listings for your time. Yes. So make and I'm sure here you catch at the hotline. it. So tweet us and jump on Facebook. I'll respond to you. We're here. <laughs> exactly. We got to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to do we're going to do up your your true crime headlines. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Bye. 
Hi, Tom Bodette. If you can hear me, then you have an internet connection, which means you can do cool things online, like listen to streaming radio, obviously, or watch a video of a monkey washing a cat. Let your freak flag fly. Or you can book a room at a great price at motel6.com. Isn't the internet wonderful? Everything you want right at your fingertips and, whoa, did not need to see that. <clears throat> I'm Tom Bodette for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I paid more than the minimum each month, and soon enough, it was gone. So you're just giving up? Giving up on what? The life of luxury. Egyptian cotton, caviar Thursdays, designer everything. What are you talking about? Our plan. What happened to winning the lottery and mastering the art of the perfect mimosa? Hosting galas, wearing enough jewelry to require a bodyguard, vacationing in the French Riviera, and then buying it. I just thought maybe it was time to prepare for my future. You know, set some financial goals, make some smart investments, open a 401k. Financial goals? Investments? A 401k? You are horrified right now. Listen, if winning the lottery were easy, everyone would do it. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Northern Tool and Equipment. So me and the boys head out to tailgate today and find some other fans in our spot. Well, it happens. Uh, cheering for the wrong team. Oh, this is war. Even worse, they've got this couch set up and everything. A couch? Yeah, it's a uh, sectional. All right, first thing, don't ever use the word sectional again. Done. Second, I want you to grab a 4,700-pound tow chain with J-hook and grab hammer. Throw that on the back of your truck. Got it. Now you're going to hail Mary the J-hook over the end of that couch. Time to find a better spot for your new friends. That should do it. There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the wacky waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to After Hours AM, The Criminal Code, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Olson and... Dr. Clarissa Cole. Now, we covered one story about the strange man living in walls, so now we are going to continue to cover our true crime headlines with Dr. Clarissa Cole. Again, these are brought to you by Dr. Cole's website, thecriminalcode.com, your one-stop shop for all things true crime and wonderful. And yeah, even once in a while, Amazemo. Actually, more than once in a while, all the time, Amazemo. And after you've visited there, I need you to go over to americas-most-haunted.com. That's really the best, coolest, awesomest, paranormal slash true crime website ever created or devised by man. That is the one that is <laughs> amazing. There you can That's read. one of my favorite sentences ever. Right there, right there you can read Eric's um, articles. So every show has an article with it. So not only can you listen to the show live, but you also can read the article that is attached with it. So <sighs> done. Whew, that was a lot. Okay. That was sensational. It was. It was. It's like I've done it before or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... If we are getting back to headlines, there is one that this story, it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, there, There is a New York City man. This happened a day ago or so, and it, he was seen shattering a store window and stealing a Barack Obama mannequin. 
Wow. Why? Right. For good or for ill? Yeah. Well, for which one? Yeah. So apparently, um, they he was very upset. He was definitely a Trump supporter. He was very angry with Obama's policies, wow. and he kept on repeating it after he was caught that he hated Obama and Obama ruined the country. He also ripped his arm off. Um, he said the doll was giving me bad looks. I'm tired of him. Obama <laughs> brought the country down. So, so the, he. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. That doll's giving me shifty looks, so you decided to... <laughs> yes! S- it's a doll, man. Relax. Get a hold of yourself. But, but that isn't really why I was questioning the story. Um, the reason I was questioning the story is that this mannequin of Barack Obama, which, by the way, I didn't even know they they made those. That's a little disturbing. Um, yeah, around, it yeah. was. it was in a window, a store window of a place in uh, Harlem called Romantic Depot. <laughs> so he was in a porn <laughs> shop? They had a Barack Obama mannequin in a porn shop? Uh, they call it a lingerie store. It's lingerie oh, and more. Oh, come on now. Yeah. It's the more part that gets you in trouble. Everybody it's goes the into the lingerie, but they end up shopping for more. Yep. So... My question is not really why did the guy break in and take this mannequin? Why the heck was there a mannequin of Barack Obama in Harlem's romantic depot? Well, you know, you know, there's a lot of people that think that Barack Obama is a sexy beast. I'm, I'm telling you, oh, I, they, they, I don't they, doubt he had it. He a following but... amongst the ladies, man. He did, especially when he sang that when he'd sing once in a while. Oh, ah, you're was, right. He was crooning. Right. I mean, the guy was just a crooner. I mean, he could really sing. Well, he, has, he had so much personality, and and he was kind of just this, and is, it's not like he's in the past, but uh, he's no longer president. He really has a, an awful lot of charisma, and, you know, I don't know about the looks. I, I'm probably not that great a judge. I, I don't think he's, you know, considered... Uh, not good looking, but the bottom line is that charisma. It's a combination of that of intelligence, it's Captain charisma. a sense of yep. a sense of humor. Uh, I know he takes his job and and his role very seriously, but I think he always reserved uh, the ability to laugh at himself. Unlike other people who will go mm-hmm. nameless, he always. Yeah. You know, he was secure enough in his own skin, and I mean, just think of what he accomplished. So, uh, yeah, no pun intended, his own skin. So, I, I think, um, yes, I've heard it from many people, all different ages, many women, all different ages, all ethnicities, who really think that he is extremely appealing and you know, sexy guy. Not in some overt stripper way, but in all the, <laughs> in, in all the right. Now, things. welcome to the stage, Barack Obama. Maybe not that <laughs> kind of stripper. Hey, everyone needs a second career, you know. <laughs> so, well, so, apparently yeah. he had one there. Yeah. yeah. So he steals the the mannequin, and what did he do with it next? Put it from a train or something? No, he just kind of started destroying it, oh. I guess. Yeah, he he grabbed one of the mannequin's arms before throwing it to the ground, uh, the, the arm, I guess. Um, and then he he wanted to, you know, kick him. And he's just he was trying to destroy the Barack Obama mannequin. But it, they called it in pretty quickly and they came to to pick him up. But I, I'm not even sure. I, I don't know. There were just so many questions. That's I can't strange. even I can't comprehend the story really that guy's but mentally ill that guy's gotta be mentally ill then i'm sure you, you know you, there, you there's think something so. going on yeah you know no normal sane person's gonna stop probably walking along my own business and just stop and look and go that's barack obama i must destroy you know just saying well and, and that the mannequin was looking at yeah, him yeah, there, yeah. There, there, uh, there's a lot there's of some circumstances issues there. there there's there's, yes. there's some issues there with that guy all right well <laughs> There's another one. There's another one. Not a mannequin stealer. This guy, he's he was, uh, it, and it is actually kind of a, a sad story. But um, I guess in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, uh, there was a man who uh, passed away. He died of a meth overdose before being eaten by a bear. Okay, <laughs> at least he died before being eaten by the bear, I guess. 
<laughs> you know, it, 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 what? Okay, so uh, let me wrap not my. It's funny. It's just let, too weird. Let me wrap I'm my right. mind. So there's a guy in the mountains doing meth. Yeah. And he and he he overdoses on said meth. Yes. So I'm going to assume the bear, after his death, I, I hopefully quite a while after his death, comes across the dead man and decides, "Hey, I'm gonna eat this dead man." Did the bear get high on meth at that point? I there again more questions than answers. Um, well, no. What happened? Was, so unfortunately, because the park rangers came across a bear eating the corpse of a human, they did put the bear down before. I... Be, you for the safety of of others, right? <laughs> what? Um, and just for the overall disgustingness of it all. Yeah. So they come across. They see Yogi eating a, a person. You know, see, see it's you know, see him hanging off his mouth. Gnawing away. Yeah, just gnawing away. It says, "Hey, do you want some of this?" And they showed up, and so they ended up putting the bear down. Hmm. But that was before they knew that the bear was eating the guy after he died of of the mess. Yeah, and they, at that point, I'm thinking, was he not fair game? Come on, they, oh, the bear was didn't he kill not him. Fair game. Oh my god. <laughs> the bear god. didn't kill him. Is all I'm saying. Oh, it was literally god. game, wasn't it? It was more like road <laughs> yeah, kill. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, that that that's just wrong. That's just wrong, it Clarissa. That's just and, wrong. And top, it is. Well, and on top of it, apparently this guy who was extraordinarily high on meth uh, had gone to the park to illegally remove ginseng to so, sell it. So well, isn't you just one one good decision after another? Wow, this know. guy is truly a mental giant. Ginseng. Now, if you guys have ever seen that show on Discovery, I think yes, it is, or they're searching for ginseng. Evidently, there's a big market for it. Huge market for ginseng. I it's take extreme, it. Yeah, it's extremely valuable, take it but every not, day. not as much in the states. They often sell no. it uh, to overseas uh, uh, clientele. Yeah, normally who... it's a bunch of good old boys with their Ford F one fifty going out there, going, "We're gonna find us some ginseng." Watch us yep, get and... it up. Very, very valuable, and that's what this guy was attempting to do. But instead, he overdosed and got well, eaten by a bear. So. He stopped for a meth for a meth break. Who doesn't do that? You know, when you're ginseng hunting, I'm gonna <laughs> sit back and go ahead and spark up here, and then he dies from a meth overdose. The bear comes along, eats him. It sounds like a bad joke. Like one of those really bad, almost. Uh, I, I'm going to do something illicit in the woods where there are bears. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a great I think idea. I need to be on meth <laughs> to, to to hang with the bears. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So they they shoot the poor bear. Yes, you know, I felt bad for the bear. He did nothing wrong. He was no. Just, I, that's what I'm he's saying. The bear, up. like, yeah. yeah. The bear came across the guy and was like can't believe my luck and then this happens <laughs> is that how bears talk yeah. i <laughs> yeah. thought it was more like this hey boo boo we're after that meth guy <laughs> that's how i thought better than, a, better than a picnic basket <laughs> <laughs> that's not a picnic a basket that's a meth pipe come on boo boo uh, have you ever free based <laughs> where, where was this exactly uh rocky mountain or smoky mountain national wow uh, park Okay, uh, moving along, because there's one just below it I really uh, really want to get to. Uh, well, there there's several. Is this the, the Pennsylvania, the, the one where he tries yes. to break his... Yes. So there is a man. Let's see. He's agitated Pennsylvania man. Now imagine. Agitated, imagine you live angry. off the beaten path. Yes. And all of a sudden, someone, someone comes up to your door in your windows and starts knocking on them, banging on them, saying, the zombies are coming and snakes are biting my ankles. Oh, my Let God. What? Yeah. Or, that is a perfect storm of yuckitude. What a combination. Like, what, yeah, so, like, what do you do if you see panicked man banging on your window saying, the zombies are coming and the snakes are biting my ankles, please let me in? Um, you call 911. Yeah, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be calling 911. <laughs> Letting the police oh, deal with it. And he let's see the individuals. So apparently they did call nine one one. Um and then as he began climbing through a broken window, the individuals inside the home armed themselves with a claw hammer and a frying pan. No. They're yep. gonna they're gonna well, you know what? Never mind. I take that back. I would too, because this guy's right. probably on something. And if he's running from zombies and snakes, who knows what he's willing to do to get in the house? 
Well, he broke a window to get in. He started crawling yeah, see, in the window. Up. Right there. You, people, yep. Yep. But but luckily for basically everyone involved, he did hear the police siren <laughs> and he went to the home's rear door and began trying to kick it in uh, uh, for some reason. So basically they they police did take him down and they said no zombies or snakes were spotted by law enforcement officers who concluded that he was under the influence of a controlled substance now if he would have been a smart guy a, a smart criminal he would have stopped and said thank god the police are here they can save us from the snakes and the zombies right yeah, you see, think he'd be glad you, you would think so you would think he'd be you see he knew that there was no zombies or snakes he knew he just I'm wanted to get in the sure, house. Yeah. He was after that frying it's, pan. It, yeah. <laughs> it's possible, but I can't even imagine, like, say you're just at home watching a movie on Roku or something, and all of a sudden somebody runs up to your window, starts banging on it, talking about Let zombies. me in! Yeah. The zombies are here! Yeah, no, no, that would not end well for them. No, it was. it, it would be pretty terrifying. And he yeah. looks fairly young in this photo. <laughs> they have a photo of him. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what he was on, but I, I hope he's sober now. And well, what would you do if someone came knock at your door, Eric, saying that there's zombies and snakes after him? Nine one one, because you you want to get whatever assistance may be needed. I mean, you want to help them, but you don't know what someone that <laughs> unhinged is going to do. I, I wouldn't want to try to. I wouldn't tackle helping them by myself. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that that, and he looks like a normal guy. I mean, there's a picture, like you said, a selfie in a bathroom. Why are they yeah. always in bathrooms? Why are you selfies? Said like sixty percent or more of them are taken in bathrooms. Well, what the hell's selfies. up with that? Why is every selfie almost in a bathroom? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't like, want to see you in a bathroom. We're in a bathroom mirror. Like, turn the phone around. That's what the selfie camera's for. Exactly. Oh, taking it in a bathroom mirror. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. It drives me insane, but that's sort of the all the rage. But guess what? There's another man here that I... Oh, God. I don't know if you guys can post this to, to Facebook, or maybe I can oh, post it I to can, Facebook. I can post anything to Facebook. What would oh, you like? Oh, my posting? God. Let's take care of that it right is, now. It is the best. It is the best mugshot potentially I, that I have ever seen. Well, let, let's let's ask the crowd in the old Facebook Live whether or not that's the best mug mugshot <laughs> they've ever seen. Do right. so, you, you know which one I'm talking about? I do. I do. Yeah, you mean the mannequin? Yes. Look at him. Oh my goodness! Like that is one uh, manscaped individual. Dude, he wears makeup like a boss that I'm is serious he looks like a mannequin he look, remember the movie mannequin he yes. looks like he looks like uh, uh what's her face before she was trans before she came alive so yeah. this guy yeah he does not look real and, no because he he's not right he's, or is he is he real no he's real he's real he's a real human he's a real human no i can see where he used highlighter and like I can see how he applied his makeup, and let me say, like, like I said, he, he, if he, if he doesn't have like a job now, he's got a job doing makeup. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Yeah, because he looks just like a man. He looks like Ken. He looks like Ken that's gone on a bender. <laughs> yeah, Ken <laughs> who started doing drugs and didn't know what to do. Yeah, before he got ate by the the uh, the bear. The yeah. bear. I know this is Ken before he goes into the really bad downward. <laughs> this is Ken. This is Ken on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? It's so true. Like, like he's got like perfect bone structure. This uh... guy looks like a Ken doll. But the the reason, in case you are just listening and cannot see this, the reason that it's so striking is that he's got bleach blonde hair, black eyebrows, black thick like black jet eyebrows, black. But, almost yeah, as nice black. as the doorbell liquor. Yeah, almost yes, as almost. nice. Not quite. Almost. <laughs> Beautiful eyebrows and a red beard. Yeah. Red. He is all sorts of confused, and he's definitely got a bunch of like smoky dark liner around his eyes. Like his eyes are gorgeous. smoky like, dark. What would you do so if you met this guy on the street, Clarissa, as a woman? And is that you? Ken, um, is that you? Ken? <laughs> no, no I, I would actually, I know how I can be. I would probably say your, your like, uh, highlighter is 
amazing. Like you're I probably beautiful. Just think you're a beautiful man. Yeah, I'd be man. like, oh my god, look at you. Yeah, yeah. Look no, at your makeup. He looks, I don't know if you'd freak. want me to call it makeup, but uh, he yeah. kind of looks like a freak to me. That's just me. Though. Well, you know, I'm not saying I'm just, it's normal. Just I just mean, <laughs> you, know, you know, mainly because I'm angry because I'm not that good looking. So, you know, normally I'm just really mad. He's that good looking. No, really, people. He doesn't look real. Although, would I want to go to prison with that face? No, probably not. Oh, no. (laughs) They'd pass you around like a Snickers bar in there. Yeah, he's pretty beautiful. So he's only and he's only 20 years old. He was arrested in Nashville. He was trying to use a stolen credit card. And when he was asked for further ID, he brought out a Tennessee driver's license. But he all of his everything the credit cards the the license everything that he had was not his it was all stolen so he was charged with identity theft and being held on a $25,000 bond he's due in court on monday i let's see when this story was so monday oh man you guys just missed it it was it it happened on sunday so he was due in court monday the 4th i was going to say you could go visit be a fan <laughs> go you know? visit be a fan <laughs> What? Good, good, good oh. looking kid. Ho- hopefully he maybe has learned his lesson. And by the way, if you're going to steal somebody's identity, don't have blonde hair, black eyebrows and a red beard. No, that cause... will not work out. And he probably stole, you know, like uh, a woman's identity on top of it. Oh, you man, don't look I'm... like a Sandy to me. He is the very definition of multi-hued. <laughs> <laughs> and yet somehow he carries it off. That's the crazy part. That is a interesting because he's look. that good looking. Yeah, yeah. That, that that is an interesting look that he's got for himself. That is awfully strange. Let me tell you. It, it, I, I had to share that one because it was just too too funny. Um, let's see. I wanted to talk about actually a little bit more seriously because this one kind of okay. It doesn't kind of freak me out. It actually really freaks me out. It's the the story about the M- Illinois family. Um. Do you guys know about? I say I'm not familiar with it. The the Nest system. Yeah, yeah, the ones that are always getting hacked lately. What what is that? What what is it supposed to be used for? I don't know it at all. Uh, well, it's basically just a security system, is a, what it is. It's you know just cameras is that go over there. Supposed um, to be in in your house yeah, or, yeah. or outside? They I can don't... they can do both. I mean, they got rigs for both. Uh, I think generally they run off a of Wi-Fi. They're like Wi-Fi cameras, so you can hook up to your. Uh, home's internet and be able to see what's going on in your house while you're gone and it'll record everything like to the cloud and they're actually pretty nice uh, i would not mind having a nest or two or ten they're spo- supposed to be in your house then like inside they can be yeah I guess. they can be in and out because huh. they also make the doorbells that are like, so the, the one that I the man licked was a nest doorbell so yeah no what am am I miss Eric? What am I saying? Why would I want cameras inside my house? Why would I want something inside my house? Why why would you like want in, a camera inside. in your house? I don't know. Inside? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can assure you I would not. But yeah, there I are see. there are people who do, like my my daughter, her her husband, it's my oldest daughter. Her husband is a manager of an Apple store. So, oh my. Is he gadget oriented? <laughs> oh my! Is he gadget oriented? Um, and and my daughter kind of plays along with it, but and they and they have their twenty uh, month old knows how to tell the lights how to change color. Uh, think about That's that. Crazy. He'll say he'll blue blue blue. <laughs> <laughs> lights turn blue. It's so, so hilarious. Yeah, and he waves his hands. I would not want it inside the house because I I just don't want that kind of invasion of privacy. Plus, remember these things can be hacked. They can Let's be face. real easily. Yeah, if you I have if you have an confused. infant, perhaps if you have a large you know if you have a large house and maybe an infant and and you don't sleep near the infant. I mean, maybe you'd want to watch, but I mean, I would think hearing is is as good or better. Um, I, I wouldn't want it, but again, uh, you know, that's, that's where we are these days. People are, people are linking up to everything. They want to see everything. They want to hear everything. And a lot of people want to share everything. And my goodness, I say reserve a little bit of your life for, for, you know, private means. I, I'm, I'm starting to feel somewhat overwhelmed by the amount of oversharing on social media. And and it's not just 
younger people. You know, I see it all the time. People in my age range on Facebook in particular. I mean, they're telling every intimate detail of their lives and and asking for support on it all the time. I, I it makes me a little I, I'm not opposed to any specific iteration of it. It just seems so overwhelming and I, I don't know, needy. I mean, I'm, I let people know about my mother. I mean, I had to, you know, if that part of what Facebook is for is to share with family and friends, obviously. And so, you know, I, I thought it was important to just let them know what the status is and that that's what's, you know, that she's in the ICU, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't, I, I didn't feel right spending a lot of time, for example, you know, asking for support. Uh, I figure if people see that and if they care, they will absolutely offer their support. And I am sure. so happy to have it. And, 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 and it is helpful, but I'm, I, I don't know. I'm oversharing myself tonight. I get, I think because of my uh, emotionalism, but uh, I, I, I'm very concerned that we're just starting to bleed inside each other's wounds. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I guess that's why it was, I guess that's why this story was odd to me because I, I, I truly didn't, I, I'm, not, I'm not being cute. I didn't understand like that they were inside the house. It, it didn't make sense to me why someone would put cameras inside their home like a business is different you know if you have maybe a lot of product there and Mm -hmm. it's a business and it's so it's not overly personal I just I thought to myself my gosh why would you have a camera Mm. like a camera that connects to a cloud by the way yeah in all these different areas of of your home and and so that I guess like Joel what you were saying so I guess at this Illinois home they they got hacked this this nest system yeah they hacked them like crazy it's all over the news yeah they got hacked, and so they started like um, I guess you can talk through them too. I mean, I have cameras, <laughs> I have cameras too that are outside my house. By the way, if anybody wants to hack into my cameras and watch like outside my house, feel yeah. free. Yeah. Um, that's you know what I have out there. But the, a person started talking to them and adjusted their thermostat up to ninety degrees. See, now that's just kind of fun, though. Really, I mean, it's wrong to do. It's horrible, <laughs> but that's kind of funny. That's just Come on, of fun. you know, someone that's willing to have that in their house and, and know the dangers of these things being hacked, and then it happens. You know, it's not like they're draining their bank account. They're messing a thermostat. They, it's a less. It's a cheap lesson learned. Well, sort of, except they were because you can talk through oh, no. through these cameras. Oh, no, no, and I can too. I can talk through mine too. They were insulting them. <laughs> hey, lose I some mean, weight. God, you're ugly. Yeah, right. You're really like, gonna wear that? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Got just what I need, right? Get ready in the morning, like, I don't think those jeans fit you very well anymore, uh, Clarissa. You need to get rid of it. Like just what you need. Wow. Um, so it, it heckle them as it as it yes. walked by. Yes, they, they were getting heckled. Their thermostat was being adjusted. And, and on top of that, I think they have, what is it, a, a seven-month-old child. Wow. So- and so, you know, you're exposing. And that's the thing, I guess, that gets me more than anything maybe with this this whole story is the deeper thing, like, Eric, what you were talking about. When it's a child, you're potentially exposing that child to somebody that can hack into your system. Now, if you're an adult and you want to be stupid, go ahead. Yeah. But exposing a child to online predators that look for things just like that. Yeah. What What are you thinking? You know, it's not keeping you safer. I pr- promise no, you that. No, it's, it's not. I think what it is is just to be more techy, more gadgetry, just to have it in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it'd be like living with the peanut gallery from the Muppets. I know, like, and and you don't, and since and since they're being heckled by this person, it sort of brings up the question: How long have they been watching? Well, that and ex- how many yeah, are watching? Yeah, yeah, that that is right there. You're right on that one. How long have they been silently watching, trying right. to figure out your patterns throughout the day? And what's right. to stop them from saying, "Hey, kid, come here," and start talking to the kid? Hey, go unlock the door for exactly. me. Exactly. No, exactly you, you know, right. And, like and making friends with the kid who doesn't understand the technology or how it's supposed to work. I mean, it's yeah. it's such a dangerous thing. Like having cameras outside your house is one thing. Like I said, I do myself. But yeah. inside, I just cannot figure out why you would do it. I can't. Even if you have a kid, you know what? How about not turning up your TV show and actually listening? How about that? 
True. I mean, good point. I, yeah. Good point. I, mean, I, I was, I was, I don't have children. I was a nanny for a good number of years. Um, and I had a child who I started watching her at three months old. I could hear that kid breathe differently, you know, mm-hmm. from another room. And mm-hmm. I just would just read a book when she was down, I, I you think, know, I think in the name of security, it's maybe gone a little too far the other way. You know, people are just okay. too canvassing their lives to cameras. You know, the personal lives, not outside. when like when you go on the street and stuff, because there is no expectation of privacy when you're in public that, that there is just none of that there. But when you're in your own home, yeah, because now you're not only that, but they're hacking and they're seeing what you own. They're seeing everything right. about your life. So you're opening yourself up to at the very least robbery and the very most they could kidnap your child maybe. Oh, absolutely. And they could, you know, you, you like you were saying, knowing your patterns, they know when you're home, when you're not. If, if you have a camera that's near a computer, they can look at passwords that you're yeah. entering into the computer. It's just it, it, to, to give anyone that kind of access mm-hmm. to to your oh, yeah. personal life. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Crazy. I, I'm monitoring the chat room over here on Facebook Live, and, and it runs the gamut from people that have lots of cameras in their house to none. So it's really a personal choice. Um, part of it, it is. It is the person with that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, I, I, of course, to... and like I said, my own, my own son-in-law and and daughter to a, to a lesser extent are are gadgeted up, you know, yeah. and they love it and they know how to use it. Part of it is you got to get comfortable with it. You have to, but my my concern is we always have to think about or try to think about anyway the ramifications of new technology because I truly, truly believe that with technology, broadly speaking, and I'm not saying this happens all the time because certainly Mm -hmm. it doesn't, but the potential is always there. One of my favorite song lyrics is, and it's referring to technology, it begins with a blessing but ends with a curse, making Mm -hmm. life easier but making life worse. Sure. And I'm always concerned about that. I thought you were going to say paranoia will destroy you. Well, that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, this is a Kevin Ayer's song, one of my favorite relatively obscure British singer-songwriters uh, extraordinaire. And so technology, is it's a tool, but, it, but we not only use it it uses us Mm. and it changes us and it's not necessarily always for the good and we at least have to be mindful of it and try to at least pay attention to what technology is doing it how long is it going to be before we really really truly comprehend what the internet and constant access uh, you know, the digital revolution has done to us. How long is that sure. going to take? And sure. I- I'm pretty positive it's not all for the good. Oh, mm-hmm. gosh. I mean, and that's that's very clear. You know, when you think about the the uh, it just honestly, just like some of the stories that I read, I, I do writing as well. I do some creative writing. And um, there are people that are much younger than me that are writing short stories as well. And they they write these sort of um, suspense. I like suspense and sci fi. And and it's not that the stories aren't good. They are. But I've noticed a trend in the stories of people that are, say, in their early 20s. Um, mm-hmm. And they all have to deal with technology and technology not working, like yeah. getting stranded, you know, getting stranded, like a uh, car breaking down and getting stranded yeah. somewhere and not knowing what to do. And it's just, like that's the theme of all of your horror stories. If that's the, the worst thing you can come up with is that your phone breaks and you don't know what to do. Like we're in trouble. No, <laughs> they, all, they all have people with no signal, you see, in horror flicks. And that's how it's, they set it, it up ridiculous. now to, to get like, them to be, you know, secluded. And, you know, Verizon and AT&T hate those movies, by the way, because, you know, they have not, <laughs> they have coverage everywhere. Uh, but really, it's a, it's a sign of the times, you know, that we are so we're, we're creeping closer to 1984. And not just that, I think we're we're getting away from like I, I see things sometimes um, oh, like being advertised that are like new. Like I was I was actually joking about this with uh, Henry the other day. We saw a, a knife. It's like a, a cake uh, edger. It's something that's been used I- for pastries for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. It just makes the edge of a cake when you wipe it around the edge of a cake. It makes pretty. 
right? I've had my grandma had one okay. and I she passed yeah. it down to me. I yeah. have it. And they were selling it as like a new device. Oh, what's, oh, what, what's old is it. new again. But one cutting thing is, edge. Yeah. One thing that I'm came like, to mind about these cameras, though, is maybe the government's watching. Um, I would love for it to, you uh, know what I always tell that, people? Though. Think about that. No, I, I'll, Alexa I'll tell you. you know, all that no, stuff. no. You know what I think about that? I, mm. First of all, I work for the government. So I can tell you this with 100,000% confidence. Um, the government is not organized <laughs> or well-staffed enough. Uh, yes. Ever. You, you missed ever. my point. I was you trying to get it. the conspiracy theorists to get all oh, like, good. oh, my God. Look, that's, that's always what I tell conspiracy <laughs> theorists. I'm like, if you think that our government is somehow organized and well oiled enough to literally be watching your every move you have been watching way too many movies my friend that is hey, not hey how clarissa go- i would add however a caveat to that i agree with you and in my observation and, and my dad worked for years and years and years in uh in aerospace and uh you know so he was dealing with the government and he certainly had a similar view my uncle too for that matter also in aerospace pretty similar views the the exception to that I would take though is, and and we're seeing this played out right now on the national stage. Once they do latch on to you, however, oh my, they're gonna find out what they need to find out. Yeah. It's just there are so many people, and there are so many distractions that the odds that anyone is paying any attention to you in particular is very low but once they do latch on to you and this is true for crime i'm sure you know that you know most crime goes unsolved but once they get their hooks into you they're probably going to get you i mean don't you think that's true what once once all the power once all the power and the technology and the money and the manpower what once that once that ocean liner has been turned around and headed in your direction, it's probably going to get you. But didn't we have Snowden, though, blow the whistle on that? They were listening to thousands of phone calls. They they are, but they're looking for buzzwords. They're looking for little things that tip that scale into should we listen more, should we not? And I, I, 99% of the time, they don't continue listening. Because it's a buzzword, it goes by, nothing else is linked to it, they move on. Um, it, there are people that are monitoring all sorts of things. It's, but is, is it like a big conspiracy? I mean, you know, Eric, what you were saying, the, the probability of you actually being tapped into, especially if you're just a regular citizen, yeah, no. It just, I'm sorry. It just doesn't happen the way people think it does. I agree with you. All I'm saying is if, if by some chance you become one of that teeny tiny percentage that they decide and, yeah, they're going to find out everything yeah. about, then they are going to find out everything about you. And oh, they, you, get, you might yeah. as well. I was like, you just might as well walk into the office. There's no well, point yeah. then, because if they're yeah. trying to build a case against you, don't help them in 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 just pretending like you don't know they're there. Just yeah. figure it out. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So technology is not necessarily always our friend. We learned that people will hack your nest and heckle you while they watch you walk by. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, this is awful. <laughs> It's you so know. awful to think about that, that somebody's like sitting there judging you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That'd be hilarious, though. That'd be hilarious. Why are you doing this for the free cable? <laughs> I know, right? Like, wait, are you eating after 10 p.m.? What are you thinking? Like, no, no one needs that. It just it was such a disturbing sort of story. But I agree that, like, technology is not helping us. And it's certainly not helping us use our everyday senses. Yeah. Um, it numbs you. To things which I think is is a really sort of disturbing that uh, is trend. Very, very disturbing. And our, and our physical, you know, just our physical state where we are changing so much faster than evolution can keep up with it. You know, we some of us still have prehensile tails. You know, think about that. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so, you know, the bottom line is we have to remember, you know, I I I hate going too far in any one direction. I, I'm so much a believing in moderation, but I, I, I am concerned that we are outpacing that that the technology and that the changes in the way we live our lives is so fast that we're not able to keep up with it. And so that's why, you know, it, it may be a cliche. It is a cliche. It may even be silly, but things like a paleo diet. I mean, 
that can have some meaning. You know, I mean, we did evolve over hundreds of thousands of years a certain way. And we've seen so many changes just in the last few thousand years. And we've seen in, incredible changes just in, you know, hundreds of years. I mean, the pace just keeps picking up. And I mean, I'm afraid we're going to end up like like the people on the on the ship, the spaceship in Wally, right, where you just you no longer are functional as a physical entity. And that's a really big part of who we are. We do need to be physically fit. We do need to be able to perform functions with our bodies. And that's a key part of being alive. Well, yeah, that, that is true. I think it's very important to continue functioning in your body. Thank you. Well, well, no, I mean, we don't we don't do that. And and I think that but we've had the only thing that I kind of console myself with is that we have had periods like this before. Right. The the yeah. Industrial Revolution. Of course, we was did. A, exactly the same, you know. And so, like, we, there was this huge increase in population, this huge increase in sort of urbanization and moving to urban centers and that being the the big everything. And, and, and sort of like the idea of robots what? and machines taking over the world. And and that's not really what happened. There was sort of that backlash ag against it in mm -hmm. some ways, like the, the American family was really highlighted again after that. R religion was really sort of pushed again after that, because there's this idea that mechanization was sort of destroying that fabric of the American society. So the pendulum swung backwards. And when you look at what's happening in politics right now, is that not what's going on? Is not the pendulum sort of swinging against the, it, it is. the technological oh, it is. revolution? It, it is. You are you know? absolutely right. But if you're, to, yeah. if you're to go back in time when the car was first introduced, people were backlash against that like crazy. Well, exactly. You, you and it's, know, that's so, what happens when a period goes too fast. And this technological yeah. revolution, now it's all about being being religious and being with the family. And so there's all these conservative values being pushed to the forefront because that's how America anyway responds so it, it'll it'll balance out in time but but i do worry that there's like a whole generation of people that say don't know how to work a rotary phone it freaks hey, me out I love, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i love rotary phones i remember those mine dial was attached it, to dial, a wall we still I, see dial. and think about that like don't no, dial the phone and they don't even know what that means hang up what does that mean yeah, listen to us old timers talk about that antiquated old technology. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn right now. Well, the last thing A I dial to, to sort of conclude uh, my thoughts, anyway, on the, on the whole technology thing. I mean, you know, it's clearly kind of a Hegelian sort of thing where you have the wild pendulum swing to one side. Then you have the wild pendulum swing. You have the reaction to the other side. Then you end up somewhere in the middle. But, you know, you, it, it's important to know which swing you're in and, and try to figure out where you are in that. And I, I, I still think that we do need we we are not obligated to accept into our lives all technology. Just yes. because it's created does not mean it's good for us. Exactly. Not everything. That's why it's a moderation and you select what you use. You don't have to use all this technology. You, you can put it aside just as easily. You know, uh, I know plenty of people that still have flip phones that, that refuse to get smartphones. I, I know plenty of them and that's just fine too. And it, it, it all it, it's only as intrusive as you allow it to be. I, that is I true. Ran in I ran into a woman named Ruth at a, a secondhand store the other day, and she was buying records, and I was buying records, and she was shocked that I even knew what a 78 was and that I actually had something to play it on. And there was this uh, sentimentality about her. She was a much older woman that somebody that she considered a lot younger would be doing that. And I guess I just want to encourage people that, you know, adopt as much technology as you want to. But don't totally deride exactly. the past. Exactly. Because okay. it's important. Let's move on, though. We're running out of time already. Only 15 minutes left. We still got two stories to get wrapped through. Yes. Okay. So this one, speaking of technology, this is super creepy. But it happens. And it happens more than anyone would like to, you know, that talked about. So do you, you guys know what a cam girl is? That, um, that sort of phrase. I, I, oh, yes. I, I, oh, yes. I might. I might. A cam. So for those of you that don't know, a cam girl is usually somebody that engages in some sort of porn sexual type activity over the Internet, but they interact with uh, 
people. You know, it's it's viewers. not just like oh, yes, they, okay, that's they that interact is. with you. Right. So it's not just like watching porn where they don't know you're there. They taped it at some other time. A cam girl is where they say, "Hey, I'm going to be on camera at." What six o'clock tomorrow? And, he, and if you oh tune my in, lord, that's join me! Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, putting yeah, on a yeah, show gotcha, for you. Gotcha. Just yeah. you. Yeah, webcamming, right. basically. Yeah, okay, yes, I got gotcha. you. And, and they they collect money from people, so people have to buy in to be allowed <laughs> to watch, right? And I think that a lot of people, uh, men, get the idea that they're special or that they're the only ones that are watching. No, the, no. I'm sure yeah, not. I mean that's how it's set up, right? That you're, yeah, like you're special, yeah. right? Because the, because because the woman is the person that's moderating the, the feed of comments yes. coming in, so she she's the one that knows how many people are tuning in, not the people tuning in. Exactly. Um, so there was a a man named Grant Amato, and he was invested in an online relationship with a Bulgarian woman that he met on one of these porn sites. <gasps> oh no, that's going to go badly for him. Yes, he's he yeah, he's in Florida, and his older brother actually said this. He feared that he would quote kill everybody because his family started sort of putting these sanctions on him because it turned out that Amato stole two hundred thousand dollars from family members. Yeah. And used it to interact with this woman that he met on a cam girl website. Oh, Amato, what the hell are you doing, man? The, everyone knows us girls ain't real. What are you doing? He, he, he absolutely believed that she was real. Oh, no, 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 no. They all lied. She was interacting. Well, yeah. I mean, that's how they make their money, right? But he felt that she was his girlfriend and they were in a relationship. Yeah, uh, that's what they'll tell so, you. You know, I got a story about someone very close to me, and I'm not going to name names, that was on a website for a dating website. Mm -hmm. And the person was trying to take the person I cared about, like financially. You know, they it started off to be a slow relation. This was actually a dating website, not this kind of website, but a dating website. And next thing you know, the person starts off to re be real slow, be real nice. And next thing you know, they're asking for money. Like, oh, and they're always <laughs> either architects or they're uh, engineers on these websites, by the way. So if they tell you they're architect or engineer, don't believe them for a second. <laughs> And so they're all lying to you. And so it turns nobody out nobody knows what they actually do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so it turns out that this person is even, they're like sitting in Nigeria, right? Trying to get the money. And there's call centers in Nigeria dedicated to what? Screwing people over on dating websites. So just because you see a picture doesn't mean that's the person you're talking to. Right. Exactly. Right. So he has no idea who she really is yeah you know i mean she, it could be her like is she interacting or or some of these women if they're in sort of like a third world country they have handlers they're not interacting yeah. with you no. without being monitored no. you know they're like they're, slaves they're being themselves kept. yeah they're probably like, exactly yeah. right they're not making the money somebody else is and they're they're kept in this tiny little room so anyway he felt like she was his his girlfriend steals all this money sends it to her and when his family really sort of cracked down on him they put him in a sex addiction program treatment oh, program for, no. for internet sex addiction sure and he yeah he um basically dropped out of this addiction and he killed his brother Corey amato his parents chad and his oh mother my margaret God. found near in an orlando suburb chad found on the kitchen floor had been shot execution style along with his wife who was sprawled over a desk but what was his plan to be, meet up with this Bulgarian woman that he he met on a you know a dancing website, a cam girl website? Was that the well, plan? Uh, yeah, and uh, well, and apparently this woman, because I mean he's a high profile client, right? He's giving her a lot of money, so sure. she was she was interacting with him uh, more uh, singularly, more more personally. Yeah, so yeah. so he he was interacting, messaging her. And the family basically forbid him from ever contacting her again because she took their life savings, but he mm -hmm. was in love with her. He felt but, like he was in love with her. But here's the deal, guys. And and I'm not sure if you've ever been in a gentleman's Ugh. club, Eric. But that's that's a lot once. like Yep, me too, one time. Only once, I swear to God, Mom. Only once. And I didn't even look. Uh, but if you want a lap dance, for instance, that's no different. You pay a little bit extra, you get that extra attention. Same premise. You pay the money, you right. get the extra atten attention. So, 
it's just the it's just the same profession, I gotta tell new you guys, technology. It, it, you're exactly right, and unfortunately, that technology allows <laughs> the fleecing much more quickly and to uh, it, and much more deeply. It's not just twenty dollar bills, ten dollar bills. What, the cash you can haul in there, and and a lot of these clubs, I mean, they don't want you to literally go broke and no. live on the street. That doesn't look good for them, you know. They so they pay attention at least to a certain extent. If if someone's going just crazy, you know, they they're gonna take note of it at a club. Whereas oh, you know, yeah, exactly there. the opposite. Yeah. There, I had a uh, stripper girlfriend. You did. I must tell, I must tell a friend. Wow, you did a stripper. A stripper girlfriend, uh, back pre-dawn, obviously, uh, in between marriages, and uh, she was a very interesting person. She was an engineering, speaking of which, engineering student who was putting herself through school, and you know she was attractive and knew how to use what she had, all, all the things that you would expect. But it was fascinating to find out and hear her talk because she did feel bad about it and she did limit it. But she said there were other girls, some of the other, even, you know, the even higher money makers. I think she was like third, fourth in the club out of dozens and dozens and dozens. But the ones above her w- didn't have the scruples that she had. And, and I, I was hearing these stories and I ended up even meeting a couple of them. I went to some party, you know, with a bunch of strippers and, and their friends. I did not ever go see her in the club, though. So I never I never watched her, never saw her, didn't spend any time in that club. The only time I was ever in there was picking her up or dropping her off. Uh, never stayed, never watched. And, and that was a hard and fast rule that I had. To have. I had to compartmentalize. But anyway, these men, most of them older. Uh, or at least seemed older at the time, probably 40s and 50s, I guess. You know, this is 20, 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago now. And um, exact same mentality. These men would come in night after night after night or day after day after day and give these women all of their money. And they felt, thought they were in a relationship. They thought that they were doing something that wasn't just purely a financial transaction or another way of looking at it is super high end prostitution where they don't even have to do (laughs) the final deed. You know, they were in essence kept women, but some of these women made more money than the men who were taking care of them. And it is so disturbing and upsetting. And it it's, can only be worse now because of the degree that technology enables the speed and, um, uh, and the volume with sure. which technology enables it. Sure. So there's my tale. I observed this in the, analog form 25 years ago huh which is that's crazy to think about like i i mean just just guilt wise i would not be able to do it no Um, no thanks i just wouldn't because because i think that you would at some level these people these men primarily are are kind of falling in love with you or feeling Mm -hmm. as though there is a relationship when you know as the stripper, that there isn't one. Sure. And so it's uh, kind of this you know. weird sort of ethical thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, okay. What happened to our, our buddy, though? The one, Or not our buddy, but the guy that killed his family. I don't want to call him my buddy after I found out what he did. <sighs> really yeah, disappointed well, no, me there. He, it's, it's awful. I mean, so the, his public defender, so he only has a public defender. It sounds like the public defender is sort of indicating that he does have some mental health issues. Um, he was fired from a nursing uh, he, now he's facing three charges of first degree murder. He's being held in Seminole County Jail in Florida. So. Wow. Man, he is going to probably get the death penalty, I would imagine. I Yeah, I, I actually would not be surprised. I mean, these yeah. are premeditated. Exactly. Premeditated. Exactly. All right, got time, just enough time to finish the last one. 
Well, this one, I, I I am so interested in this because, you know, you see these sci-fi type films or fantasy or, or, or I don't know, like uh, superhero movies where, where people do this. But you don't actually hear about it in real life. But in real life, there was a fugitive, a Spanish fugitive that had fingerprint implants. Really? That That's a thing? stay on the run it it is and and actually it's not something that i didn't know about it's just something i don't come across very often the in state prison the types of guys i'm coming across are not typically wanted by interpol you know what i mean so i'm not coming across sort of this but but this guy was and he used skin implants so what happens is you um have to burn off the prints that you have now and and typically that's done with acid Oh yeah, extremely painful, right? So you 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 acid burn all of your fingers in an attempt to kind of smooth them out, right? Because a burn will scar, but it'll smooth them out. So you 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 burn it off, and then he got skin implants to actually change the shape of his prints so that the scars beneath couldn't be detected. Wow, that is that's elaborate. Yeah, it is amazing, is what it is, and expensive. I'm sorry, I would that imagine. Is- crazy yeah i mean expensive takes a lot i mean it takes so much dedication like when you think about like people just getting regular skin grafts things like that sure your fingers your fingers something that you are using constantly you take lots of abuse and 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 rubbing and touching and lifting can can you imagine how long it would take to heal from something like that? oh for a long good long time yeah they said the process took several years because you have to do the burning let that heal. Sometimes burn again to let that heal. To regrow. And then to regrow different skin that, that the uh, implants can attach to that isn't so scarred that it won't take. Well, wouldn't, yeah. it, wouldn't it be just as effective just to scar your finger so the print would be unreadable? Well, here's the deal is that scars are also like when they do the fingerprint analysis, yeah. they're taking scars into account, right? Ah, and and, and, ba- gotcha. and the basic basic whorls and patterns could still be somewhat present beneath these scars, right? So okay. he needed to actually change the shape of his fingerprints themselves because even with the scars, you're going to have some of the whorls visible. So, I mean, he, he did the entire process. I've never heard of anyone that has. That's so, insane. That's yeah, like a super genius right there for bad, for evil. It's yeah, it's it, it basically this was Evil. Three, Evil. three decades. It's three decades after a brutal killing that they said that he he committed. His name is Nathan Eugene Mathis. He faces a murder charge of a 75 year old California man that occurred in 1986. Okay, how'd they get him though? If his fingerprints now are changed, how'd they get him? What was the well? He, know? and this is the thing. He left a fingerprint at that crime scene, and apparently he knew that he had left this fingerprint. Ah. So he went through, yeah, he went through all of these, these measures, right. To get his fingerprints changed. But that doesn't mean that they don't have a record of his fingerprints and what they were before they did. So it it ended up. Okay. Okay. Even though he tried to change everything about himself. Yeah. So he he was wanted. Essentially they knew who they were looking for. That that is, he was just, that's a strange, strange tale. Of a man gone too far with his fingerprints. And ultimately, it failed. It did fail. It did. After all that money and time, I would want a refund. And pain. Uh, yeah, don't forget the pain. A lot of that. Although, given, given what he did to this suspect, he stabbed a 75-year-old so uh, badly that the kitchen knife was bent. Wow. So do I feel do I feel bad about the pain and he wonder no. went for his fingerprint change? No. <laughs> I, I I'm glad he got caught. You don't want someone like that around. Now if it would have been like D B Cooper doing that, that would have been kind of cool. <laughs> I know, right? Then, then it would have been like, all right, that fits D B. You get a pass. You get a pass. Yep. Agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're that good and that cool, you can get away with it, D B. Yeah. Not a problem. I agree with you. But unfortunately the man is horrible and terrible and did this and i'm glad he is off the street and uh he's where he belongs in prison probably awaiting execution at this point he may be i i don't know i just know that they caught him yeah that's a good thing well guys we've come to the end of another show and this is our very first show using the facebook live i've been 
kind of not wanting to do it for the longest time, but, you know, it's not half bad. It's been fun talking with everyone over here at Facebook Live. And also, it's always fun hearing from our listeners that are over there at our other stations. So we're going to get out of here. But tomorrow night, Eric, who do we have on tap tomorrow night? Can I put you on the spot? You can put me on the spot, but it will have to remain a mystery. Do Okay, I will give everyone an update here shortly who tomorrow night's guest for Paranormal Thursday is. Till next time, guys, take care of each other, love each other, and tune in to the newest show on ID Discovery. After Hours AM, a production of Midwest Radio Productions. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And please visit www.americas-most-haunted.com. This show has been produced.